My mother's name is Ruth E. Whitfield, the eldest victim in the Buffalo grocery store massacre. I am here at the summit. I actually tagged along with someone last year. And when I saw how many experts were engaged across the spectrum of this fight against hate, uh, it was very fresh at that time, my mother's passing. Uh, and you're searching for answers. So I wanted to come to a place where I could find the most answers. And I came to Eradicate Hate, ran into Laura Ellsworth. I ran into the under, she introduced me to the undersecretary of the UN, Alice Nadutu, and uh, we struck it off and uh, had great conversations. Next thing I know, they invited me to the UN to speak and tell my story. survivor hopes to do is to tell you that you're walking along just like we were expecting nothing to happen and then out of nowhere something like this occurs it changes your life forever how <laughs> beyond the obvious of losing that that person that you love and understand this this isn't a car accident although how terrible that could be this isn't a heart attack how awful that could be when someone murders your loved one. That is a complex grief that it cannot be described or understood until you go through it. So, and then if you couple it with a mass murder, do you know that it gets even more complicated because you hear the stories of all the people that were next to her? all the persons that it affected, their family members, how it's affecting them. You know how it's affecting your family member. So you take that on, you internalize it. You develop all these new triggers, right? If I go to the grocery store, there are times when I go to the grocery store, I have to leave that grocery store because I'm overwhelmed because my mother died in a grocery store on a Saturday afternoon. There are triggers everywhere. And that's complex grief. What do you derive from talking with other people here who are also survivors, whose relatives may have died in the Tree of Life attack or any other? Uh, first, the first thing I do, is because um, I'm kind of like a resident expert at this point, is I, I give them a hug and I say, thank you so much for being brave enough to step out here to take on this because um, you are both burdened and you are blessed. You are burdened with having to tell the story again and again, but you take that on because you're not just telling a story, you're trying to resonate with people, you're trying to reach someone to say, first of all, if you're considering these acts, don't let hate turn you into something you're not. Stand down. And if you're not thinking about this, if you're not, rising to the occasion, if you think you're impervious to this, I did too, I mean, you know, it can happen at any time. Like I said, a grocery store, your kid goes to school, a whole class of schoolmates are gone with your, you know, with your child. Um, and if I may, I'll speak the unspeakable because that's what, it, that's what I'm speaking right now. The grocery store is unspeakable to me. But there are some people who relax in their comfort zones and think, uh, well, you know, they're targeting, they're targeting certain communities, like the Jewish community or the African-American community. But let's say, let, let's take this point. The killer of my mother, what was his intent? His intent wasn't my mother. He didn't care less, he could care less about my mother. She's collateral damage. He wanted to kill as many African-Americans as he could. His goal was to make it out of the store, get into his vehicle, and drive down the, sh the street and randomly shoot people. What was his goal? He wanted a reaction from that community to attack your community. He wanted to incite a race war. So how many times do we go through this before that reaction it becomes a reality? Anybody is subjected to hate. Hate, I like to say hate, no matter how much you study the target, hate has such terrible aim. It can find you. What's the fix? 
the fix is what we're doing here. The fix, I, I'll say this, I don't know what the fix is. I know that part of, the, part of it has to be the process is coming together, bringing together the various areas of expertise. There are many, and that's what this summit does best. It brings together the various areas of expertise in one place. Now, that person who's the analyst that sits in the room studying these things gets to see the face of it. They get to experience it firsthand. And, that, and, and from my perspective, I get to hear the untold efforts that they're making. And then I get to say, yeah, but you, you're leaving out the human element. Did you consider this? That improves the process and we get better at this. And then, and now you have to disseminate that information out into the world though. This is the first step. Now that now I like to say messaging, information and education, that's the fix. Messaging to the world, we can do better than this. Love over hate, however you like to say it, that's the messaging, right? The information is, do you know this? You know, do you know the threat? You know, do you have that information of what to do in a certain given situation? And education is how do we, how did we get here and how, could, how do we not, how do we improve upon our lives? You know, the more educated you are, the more you know about, I know about you, you know a little bit more about me. You know that we have more things in common than we have, you know, you demystify culture. Cultural education is what I'm talking about. In that context, what is your reaction to the escalation of hate-filled extremism? Um, <clears throat> well, I think, I, I, I just believe that we're in challenging times because with technology, uh, changes come so fast. The next move is AI. It's going to change things dramatically. That means there's going to be losses along the way. That means loss of jobs and in people feeling more and more insecure. As this country becomes more and more diverse, People see changes that they, you know, are uncomfortable with, right? So if we don't do something to educate each other, to say that, you know what? The very people that you're trying to box out could be the one that creates the job that gives your child the opportunity to, to reach the heights that you've never reached. You sound hopeful. Uh, you have to be, uh, at some point you have to say, you know, what can I do? Should I just roll up in a ball and die because I lost the most precious person in the world to me? Or do I say, you know what, mom? You were the consummate giver. So I wanna make sure she continues. My mother lost her life. You know what she went into that grocery store for? To purchase seeds for her garden. So what I say about that is, we are trying to ensure that those seeds grow through education, information, 